Hi, I'm Lance Newscaster, and this is Late Night with Lance Newscaster. Tonight, our guest is Pat My Balls, uh, the self-proclaimed king of the condo. Salutations. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, as you know, I'm the king of the condo, the local one where I live. Uh, I'm sure you're wondering how I became the king of the condo. I am, I am. It's well, it's an interesting question. story. There was a large rebellion led by me, of all the residents, against the previous landlord. And... and what, what caused that? What was so bad about Well, he was conditions. doing unfair things, like we'd complain about the heat was too high because he controlled it all from his office by like three degrees, so... Um, we just set aside the best course of action to kill him. So basically it was a bloody rebellion against him. We used things like chainsaws and this sword. Seems sensible. Um, how many chainsaws well, though, does it take? I mean, to there were like person? four or five chainsaws, about three pitchforks, and this sword. And this sword I actually uh, shoved into his stomach, and it came out of his mouth. Is that how it broke at the tip? Then? Yeah, that's the tip got lodged in his skull. Oh wow, well, yeah. Well, um, this is when you had a chainsaw there. You think? Oh, I guess maybe you must have chainsawed it off there. Yeah. Oh, well, um. <coughs> so tell me, uh. W was he before you also the king of the con condo? Well, he never called himself the king of the condo as I do, but it was implied because he was the landlord. So I just took that to mean he thought he was the king. Were, were there any implications for killing him? Well, as I told you, the heat issue. Also. Oh, any implication? I mean, what? what happened? What happened? Oh, what happened? As a result of killing him. Oh well, there was the large the nationwide publicized trial. I'm sure you heard about being a newscaster. Now, I might, I forget a lot of things sometimes, you know? But, uh, so, anyways, you, I just lost my train of thought again there, and I haven't even been drinking. That's what the sobriety train does, too. Were you going to ask me about the trial? I was going to ask you about why it is that you're subject to the jurisdiction of U.S. laws if you're in your own kingdom. Well, well, I'm not an actual king. I just claim to be a king to keep my residents slash subjects in line. You know, so... Uh, wait, what are some of your subjects, you say? So why do you give tasks to them? I mean, well, I thought that you were yeah. just their leader, like they're for them elected leader. Were you not elected? Well, no, I was the leader of the rebellion, so naturally I would become the king of the condo. Basically, one day I just. Basically, I drugged all the residents to convince them to help me kill the landlord with chainsaws. And then, while still in that drug state, convinced them to let me be their king. And do you keep them constantly drugged? Yeah, basically. <coughs> okay, um. So. As a king, you must have a favorite kingly bar, like, uh, what's a good bar that I, it's a good candy that a king might like. Well, hundred grand. A hundred grand. Is that a type of candy? Yeah, but that's not my favorite. My favorite candy is actually condo cakes. Oh, really? What? I've never heard of a condo cake. It sounds terrible. Well, it's actually quite delicious. I feel very betrayed that you would think my cake is not delicious, but maybe the reason you haven't heard of it is because it's all manufactured at my residence with all my slave residents. And basically, we produce it there and sell it, and I get all the profits. But Ordinary. And they're all drugged. Yeah, so continuously. Th does the drugging affect their work performance at all? Uh, no, it actually makes them much better workers, surprisingly. Hmm, interesting. Because I've been considering getting some... Uh, migrant workers for myself to supplement Chico, but uh... Hey, you getting rid of me, man? I said supplement, said supplement. Chico! Don't, don't talk! Don't. Oh, Sorry, Mr. Bruce Caster. I wish I never drove that boy on my lap from Mexico. I remember once I did a similar thing where it was in my landlord's head when I was trying to dispose of it after we hung it from the balcony to decay for a few weeks. 
cops didn't then, have any part in trying to stop you from well yeah so that's what led to the trial that's what led to the trial they found me driving with the head on my lap oh, damn. i got pulled over for going one mile over the speed limit one can mile. you believe it i can't i can't and i don't and i refuse to so basically he pulled me over he saw that i had a head severed head on my lap which has been decaying in the sun for about four weeks now. So it was very smelly, so I couldn't hide it under my shirt. Well, couldn't have you just said that it was like, ah, oh, my friend got his head cut off from trying to drive him to the hospital, like, you know? Well, that's what I tried to do, but he he didn't believe that. I was trying to hide it under my shirt, too, so that gave it away that I was up to something. And so basically, I just picked the sword up, my trusty sword from killing the landlord, and I just basically just shoved it right in the police officer's neck. In his neck? Yeah. Are you sure you don't mean up his ass? Well, after I put it in the neck, of course. But that was until a few weeks later in my basement. Mm, that sounds very reasonable. But, so what happened was his radio was on the whole time, so they they no, heard they me heard doing it. all this for the two weeks, but they decided to just wait it out, see if, any, if he could get out of it on his own. But then after two weeks, they came and well, tried to rescue him, but it was far too late by then. So then I got arrested, I got taken to the courthouse, I brought my sword with me, which they somehow didn't catch, and then, basically, I just... You know. Surprisingly, once I snuck a metal pipe into the courtroom. Really? Yes, uh, not as large as a sword, but all the still uh, incriminating. Well, the way I, I hid it was I swallowed it. And this was sticking out of my mouth. I thought it was just some kind of strange piercing on my lip. Interesting. So, and then so basically, I just killed the judge, the jury, all the lawyers and prosecutors, and then I just jumped out the window. And then they never decided to contact me about it. So I'm still waiting. That was two days ago. So, so tell me about your kingly duties. What do you have to do around the condos? Well, besides managing the condo cakes factory and keeping a steady supply of drugs to my residents. I have to adjust the heat levels and clean the pool occasionally. Now, do they, are they allowed access to the pool? Your servants slash... Yes, during slash. their breaks, they go for swims. What are their families? Do any people, I mean, I mean, if someone must visit... And well, whenever someone visits, I just drug them and throw them into the slave batch. Really? Yeah. And whoever comes looking for them, just repeat, repeat until I have a... That this has been going surprisingly well for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised, actually. I never thought it would get past killing a landlord. But, I don't know, I'm just going with it to see what happens. Well, I think that there are a lot of people who are probably, you know, share similar dreams and ideals of you, and it's good that they have someone they can look up to, like yourself. Yeah, I think I'm a good role model to the small children of the world. They can follow my footsteps. I hope they do. I hope all of them do. All of them. So, uh, tell me about vaginal warts and the role they play in your um, condominium society. Well, funny you should ask that. We actually have weekly rallies to promote awareness about that at the condo. We have a huge tent, about 13 square city blocks with millions of beds of people being examined. Interesting. That sounds very interesting. Maybe I could take a tour sometime. If you would like. It costs fifty dollars to take a tour. Well, I'm sure you know it's it's me. It's Lance Newscaster. I'm I'm a celebrity icon. They won't even ask me. People are usually just in such shock and awe when I walk. Well, I'm by. the one that administers it, so I can charge you whatever I want. Well, you, your, your fame doesn't impress me. I am the king of the condo. But I'm the king of late night TV. It's not impressive. You're in my domain now. But when you come to get the tour, you'll be in my domain, so... I don't know if I want to go on this well, tour. Well, you, you said you wanted to. people who come to your condo, I, so... Well, I do. The examinations draw people in, and then I drug them. And you don't think there's anything that might, you know, mess this up by going and exposing this information on live television. Well, I know that no one likes you and no one will be watching this, so... You know, it really hurts my feelings to say something like that, because I work hard. 
to, you know, to earn the celebrity status that I have, and I'd like to think that people like me for who I am. Well, I actually did a poll of all my residents. I asked them, do you enjoy this fellow on TV, late night TV, Lance Newscaster? And a shocking 100% said that they hate your guts. Well, maybe they had heard, I've, I've dropped a few albums lately. Maybe they heard Lance Newscaster in the uh, Easy e Boy Street Yo Homies. We were, uh, you know, we made, we dropped some illa beats, some killer illa beats, and, uh, you know, Funny you should we mention drank that. Mad Crunk. Chronic, we did do smoke for rocks, you know? We were doing we were doing it all. We were living the rap life. Well it's funny you should mention that album because I actually have it playing around the clock in my warehouse where we make <laughs> condo cakes. Oh really well, you know. It just since they hate you so much, it just makes them so angry and it somehow improves condo cake manufacturing. Improves their performance. When they're really angry. Well I'm glad I can be of some assistance, so uh, you know, um, I, I, I train them to kill you if they see like you, that. just so you know. So you probably shouldn't come by. In, me and actually uh, the the M Street Killers the other day, we were uh, actually talking to uh, you know Big Big Mike about you know dropping some Illa beats, and he was you know he was all like Bill Bong and I was like Fat Farm. He he was all Gucci out, and we were fucking you know stomping on the ground, man. We were. We were stomping on the pavement. We were stomping the pavement. We were hitting the pavement really hard. We got bodies up. Well, you, if you, if you and your M Street killers ever come by, just know you'll have an army of millions of slaves to deal with. Where's the king keep his army? Well, in the condo, obviously. In his sleevey. No. In his sleevey. Oh. I get it. Yeah. <coughs> so. Tell me, are there any, uh, are there any attractions besides the pool and vagina tent and, uh, fudge factory, your fudge packing factory? Well, I don't appreciate you calling my condo cakes factory a fudge packing factory because, well, it's just offensive, but it is made of fudge, actually, and they are packed by the grade A fudge packers. And it's so offensive, maybe you should jump off the fence. Well... That's what I did when I was running from the police with the severed head of my landlord. I jumped over a fence and, well, I was running away and then they caught me. And, you know, I had to kill a few more cops, but... How do you feel about the fact that your condominium complex is located so close to where the Columbine shootings took place? Well, it gives me great pride, obviously. Well, there we go. I, I had this idea that you might be very sensitive about that, but... I know that the strong and resilient and apparently very angry king as yourself is, uh, you know, capable of great deeds of cruelty and inhumanity. Well, I think I've displayed that. Yeah, do you... Well, how do you feel about Machiavelli? Machiavelli? Yeah. It's better to be well uh, I fear... Yeah, fear basically. Fear. It's better to be... have drug subjects and residents than to be feared or loved, so... I get that. That is profound. It's profound as a clown. Because if they have no, if they're just drugged all the time, you can just make them your slaves and have them listen to your terrible music all day, and then it's just fine. No one will ever revolt like I did. Do you ever uh, commit any? Do you ever do any sexual acts with your subjects? That is so offensive to me. Well, um, it doesn't seem like it's really anything worse than all, all the other things that you've done to them. I would never do something like that, ever. Why not? Except if I was using a sword. Oh, yes, of course. So, you never perform cunnilingus or analingus on them? Or, or since they're your slaves, get them to perform it on you would be the more well, desirable situation. No, I usually just use a sword, basically, and just, you know, cut large holes. Just for fun. How do you feel about funneling feces into someone's mouth? Like with a funnel? Using just like a funnel? It in? I feel pretty great about it. I mean, fecal matter, fecal matter, fecal matter, poop, poop shit, ass balls, dick, fecal matter. I agree. 
I concur. Now, what do you think about alternative energies? Well, I don't think it affects my reign as king of the condos, so I have no opinion on it. Now, in your kit, do you use electricity? Well, actually, we have a... Next to the condo kicks factory, there's an electricity factory where we have about 1,400 and a half slaves running on treadmills to provide electricity. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Do, uh, that does sound very archaic and medieval. And, uh, you know, maybe you should finger some small children in the bottles. With my sword? Or? With your fingers. I'm afraid I'll only be able to use my sword. Why well, don't I don't think that will provide full satisfaction. Not for me, but... Well... Anal rape... What do you think about anal rape in prison? Well... It's not, I it's know, an endemic. It's... It's, the it only, it's the only thing available, so... But... I mean... Rape? Wait, if you were in prison, would you rape? It would be rape. A little both, probably. You know, mix it up. One day, maybe. <laughs> mix it up. Because I would always think that it would just be better to be the dominant one, I think. You know, but I guess that's a guy I've never thought about it like that. Yeah, it's, a little variety is good, you know. It's like, you get like a, like a bag of mixed nuts, so it's not always the same nut over and over again. So, how... Are you, what are your feelings about illegal immigration? Well, you know, the more illegal immigrants that come into the country, the more that might wander into my condo and I can drug them and turn them into slaves in my condo case factory. But at the same time, they're also a competing job source, because much like your slave, well, enslaved individuals, they're also given slave wages. But well, I don't really care. Unless they wander onto my <coughs> condo property, I don't care what they're doing. And if they did wander onto your condo property, how would you break them? How would I break them? Like, like a physically? Horse. Like you know, like you have to break a wild. Oh, horse. well, like, basically, I just shoot them with my gun that has special bullets that contain my personally concocted drug that I apply to all my residents and the bullets. I mean, that's like you can you can drug a stallion, but it'll still be a feisty beast. Well, that's not what the drug is designed to do. It takes all the feistiness out of my residence. Well, Defeistified. That's what I call the drug. Well, you pro probably should incorporate some raping into your breaking policies. policies. Well, what do you think the sword's for? You're doing a bit too much raping with the sword and not. Well, it's all I get joy from. Sorry, okay, I think mean, that we're probably, you know, going to be wrapping this up for this interview. I just would love to say that it was great to have you. I'd love to have you back sometime. I'd love to be back. All right. I'm... Except, it was only two days ago that I killed all those courtroom attendees, so I'm probably going to go to jail soon. You know. So, you could come interview me in jail if you wish. I would, I think that would be great. I'll so drug can... all of the convicts and have them work as slaves in my prison cakes factory. <laughs> Alright, um, well, always a good time for a plug, uh, be cool, stay in school. Alright.